What is going on everybody? Welcome here today to a NBA redraft and today it is going to be the 2016 redraft edition. So I have done a couple of these in the past. I think I've done 2015, 2014, 13, possibly 2012 and I'm going to be double uploading today. I'm sorry I was supposed to upload this yesterday. I unfortunately, well, I went to the Mets game and it is an unfortunate thing that I went there because one, the Mets suck, but two, I just didn't have enough time to get this video out. So yeah, you'll see this I think with the double upload today. I don't know what rebuild's coming out later as of recording this but we'll see what happens so if you guys don't know these i kind of just uh recreate the first 14 picks of how they happen in real life i go into the nba draft and i reselect them so i'm gonna do that today uh i'm not gonna be 100 right people are probably gonna disagree with me so let me know what you disagree with me in the comments below also if you want to see me do 2017 2011 stuff like that let me know that in the comment section below and we can do that this is too early to tell still i believe i think we have to wait a couple years before this is set in stone so this is just what i'm saying on june 6th of 2018 going back to this draft's about to be two years old so without further ado let's get into this draft so with the number one pick in the nba draft i don't think this is a question here we're gonna remain with the pick that was made in real life ben simmons there is really no argument here he's clearly the best player in this draft would have won rookie of the year and i'm like rookie season this rookie draft class looked like one of the worst in the past couple years but now this year like people like chris dunn um jalen brown Brandon Ingram, Jamal Murray, Buddy Heald, all have had better pretty much sophomore years than rookie years. Tareem Prince as well. Sabonis. Karis LeVert. So, no more pick. I don't think there's any question. Ben Simmons clearly the best player in this draft. There's no doubt about it. He would have won rookie of the year if he'd played uh, this year. Still think he's rookie in real life. He is a rookie. So, I'm going to draft Ben Simmons. First overall pick. He's going to remain here. Here's where it gets tricky. So, I am so torn on making these next two picks. In real life, it went Brandon Ingram, Jalen Brown, but I'm so torn on putting Jalen Brown at two and Brandon Ingram at three. I'm so torn because right now, I think Jalen Brown will be the better player than Ingram, to be honest with you. I don't know if he'll have a better season next year with Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving being fully healthy. Then he's going to turn into like the fourth scoring option in that starting five. I don't know how well he could do there. But, and Brandon Ingram, well, depending on who joins him in LA, we'll see what scoring option he will be. Right now, Jalen Brown is definitely the better player. I would say, I guess, Brandon Ingram has a slight more potential, but I don't know if I want to do this off potential or just right now. I think I'm going to do this off right now. Let's switch it up a little bit. So with the number two pick, we're going to have the LA Lakers selecting Jalen Brown, who had a huge sophomore year this year. I wish that rookies going into their sophomore years and like playing out their sophomore years could be in like uh, contention for most improved player, because I feel like him, uh, like Jamal Murray, some people like that, uh, Chris Dunn could have been in the most improved player race, but... It just doesn't happen, really, to rookies, to sophomores. So, pick two, we are going to have Jalen Brown. I know a lot of Lakers fans are going to get mad at me for not putting Brandon Ingram. But, yeah, Brandon Ingram's going to go to three to Celtics. So, each of them get a small forward at the time. Uh, Jalen Brown's more of a shooting guard now. But when he was drafted, he was just clearly put out to play small forward. And, obviously, Ingram is 6'9". He's definitely a small forward. And I don't know, really, wait, how tall is Brown? He's 6'7". Okay, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to have three small forwards going off the top of the board. It's going to be Simmons, then Brown, then Brandon Ingram. All right, it is really weird with here at the Suns pick at pick four because at this time, they had an Eric Bledsoe, Devin Booker backcourt, and that looked like that wasn't going anywhere. And a lot of players here at the top of the board are backcourt players, so I would say they would not go for that. They did take Dragon Bender in real life, and I don't think Dragon Bender is worth the number four pick right now. So, there is guys that I could maybe, uh, I don't think Marcus Chris would be here. They would draft at four in a redraft. I don't know. Maybe they would just go best player available, and they would just go like Chris Dunn here at this time, because I don't know if they'll take like a reach on Tareen Prince here at three, or at four, because they do have another pick at 13, but uh, I don't know if any of these guys are falling here. Um, there was a trade where Marquise Chris was traded to the Suns at pick seven, or pick eight from the Kings, but I'm just going to make that pick normally at pick eight for the Kings. It's going to do no trading in this so like Sabonis is somebody else that we could I could say that would go maybe number four honestly I might do Demonta Sabonis going up pick four it's either him or Jakob Pertl where's Jakob where's Jakob where's Jakob 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 it's either Jakob Pertl or Demonta Sabonis or Pascal Siakam is also somebody wow the uh Raptors had a very nice front court draft here I don't know what I want to do here this is see like I Dunn or Brogdon would make sense even though they're the best players available. And obviously, Murray, Heald, Levert. Prince might be the viable... I think it's TJ Warren. Okay. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to go with my heart says. We're going to go uh, Demonta Sabonis here over Thawmaker, over Bender. And yes, Sabonis is going to shoot up 
all the way from uh, 11, where then he got traded in the uh, Baca trade. Uh, we're going to trade him all, from all the way 11. He's going to 4. Okay, so here at pick 5, uh, it's one of the ones that are going to stay the same. Chris Dunn going to the Timberwolves. At the time, they didn't need a point guard. Chris Dunn did not have a good rookie year at all. I, everybody thought he was a complete bust after his rookie year. His sophomore year with the Bulls was so much better than his rookie year. He turns into a really, 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 really good defensive point guard as well. And that is why he's going to stay here at 5 to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, at 6 here, it gets interesting. I have either Buddy Heald on the board, I have Jamal Murray, and you have Malcolm Brogdon. Pelicans here at pick 6. I'm going to actually go the better. He's a little undersized to play shooting guard. But we are going to go Jamal Murray, 6'4", um, out of Kentucky. He is, I think, a better player than Buddy Heald right now. I think he's actually a better just all-around player in general. Uh, yes, that can change. It's just I feel like Buddy Heald is just like made just to be like a 16, 15-point per game score, four rebounds, three assists, something like that, and just never like break out to 20 points. I hope he can. But also, Murray is, what, four years younger than him? Uh, two years? I thought Buddy Heald was a senior and Murray was a freshman. Definitely not then. Okay, Murray was a freshman, it looks like, and Heald was a junior. But, yeah, Jamal Murray, going to go pick six here to the to the New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans. Now, at pick seven here, it's the Denver Nuggets, and they obviously took Jamal Murray. So, with Gary Harris already on the team, they're going to go point guard here, and the guy who's going to shoot up the most back from the second round, and, yeah, he's going to be the highest guy jumping in the chef from pick 36 to pick seven yeah, Malcolm Brogdon here is going to go at pick 7 to the Nuggets. So at pick 8 here, I do have the Sacramento Kings actually getting Buddy healed. See, this is where they ended up trading DeMarcus Cousins for him back at the deadline, and they got another first round pick. But Buddy Hill, definitely the best guard available. Uh, at the time, their backcourt just wasn't good in general. It's just DeMarcus Cousins playing with a bunch of like mid-year vets. Uh, they didn't have Fox at this time. So, yeah, they do draft a nice young player in Buddy Hill. Now, pick 9, the Raptors, I'm actually not going to go. This is where it gets interesting a little bit. I'm not going to go big man. I'm not going to go Pertle. I'm not going to go, um, I'm not going to go Pascal Siakam. We're actually going to go small forward to Reed Prince here. He's just going to be the OG, um, and a known B, um, just tier at, at pick, um, at pick 10 or, or pick, um, pick nine where they ended up getting him in the 2017 draft. And yeah, we're going to take Tareem Prince at pick nine for the Toronto Raptors to pair up with DeMar DeRozan. Um, at this time, they did not have Serge Ibaka, but like Jonas Valanciunas. Um, who did they trade Serge Ibaka for? Did they sign Serge? I don't remember who they got off the top of my head. Maybe it was like a first round pick. Probably was because it's the Magic and they probably got ripped off. Or uh, I, I don't even know. So pick six here. Um, or not pick six. Pick 10. We have the Milwaukee Bucks on the board. Thonmaker, I think I'm going to retain. Uh, I'm going to stay with the pick here at this time. I think he just has more potential. Eh. Nah, screwed. We're actually going to go Jakob Pertl here. Jakob Pertl is definitely the better player. And I've been going better player right now over potential. And yeah, so we're going to take Jakob Pertl here at pick 10 instead of Thon Maker to the Bucks. Now here at pick pick uh, 11, the Orlando Magic, there's two people that I'm debating on them selecting. One is being Deontay Murray. Deontay Murray, obviously, he's turned into an all-defensive first-team player in San Antonio. And the other one is Thon Maker out of, um, where is he from? I don't remember in Canada. Was it somewhere in Africa? Mm, or Europe? No, I don't, I don't remember where he is technically from. It just says none in the top right. But I'm debating on it because they did have Vucevic at this time and they didn't have Biombo, I think, not until this offseason. And then they did obviously have or Alfred Payton at point guard. So I think they're going to go Thawmaker here. I think they go potential with Thawmaker and he would be like the Bismack Biombo of them signing. So they obviously didn't care about having two centers in Nikola Vucevic. And Biombo at the time, so it's just going to be Vucevic and Thon Maker. Now, pick 12 is the uh, Utah Jazz, but this actually went to the Atlanta Hawks, I believe. So, at this time, we're going to just draft it for the Utah Jazz. Why not? This was actually, actually, no, because, no, no, we're going to we're gonna do this to the Hawks, right? Yeah, we're going to do this to the Hawks because, at this time, this was the three-way trade with George Hill, uh, some other pick, and who was the other guy that got traded? Was it Jeff Teague? I think it was George Hill, Jeff Teague. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Okay, so Hawks are on the board. They have Dennis Schroeder at the time. They actually did trade Jeff Teague to get this pick. So, at this, I think they're going to pair up uh, Dennis Schroeder with 
with a shooting guard, and that is going to be Karis LeVert out of Michigan. Has turned into a pretty good player in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, he was drafted in the 20s in this draft. He was drafted, I think, 20, and they got that pick from Indiana. Um, I forgot what trade that was or how they got that pick, but it was a very good pick at pick 20. They could have definitely gotten like Malik Beasley or Henry Ellison or one of that of the good picks in this first round. Now, pick 13, the Suns, I think they're going to go back to the big man. Yes, they took Turin Prince in the beginning of this draft, but I think uh, they might go Scalabacy here, here over Brett. Now, I think they're going to go Dragon Bender here. Uh, still could be a viable uh, big man. He could have his potential where if he could shoot the ball. If he could become not like a knockdown shooter, but a definitely reliable shooter from deep, he definitely could be a serviceable player here. Okay, now pick now pick 14. This is, we're going to say the whole world, where Derrick Rose got traded to the New York Knicks, so they do have a needed point guard. And the Bulls might get the biggest steal of this video, which will this, this will be the last pick, and that they're going to get to pair up with um, Jimmy Butler, Deontay Murray. So they take Deontay Murray at pick 14. And if I had to make a pick 15, it would have probably been, um, Scalabissier to the Trailblazers. They took their Zach Collins a year early, but yeah, that is going to finish up this year's or this video's 2016 NBA redraft. So this is how the redraft went. Ben Simmons with the number one overall pick, Jalen Brown at pick two, Brandon Ingram at pick three, then DeMontis Sonis. Uh, DeMontis Sabonis to the Suns at pick four. That is a questionable one, I know, but I feel like this was more of a need-based pick than a best player available. Obviously, I would have went like Don, Mary, Brogdon, Heald over him, or Prince. Um, I was thinking Prince, but yeah, they did draft Josh Jackson, but I feel like Josh Jackson was a lot better of a prospect than Tareem Prince was come draft time, and even right now. Chris Dunn at five, since him he remains uh, to his team like Ben Simmons does. Uh, pick six, the Pelicans take Jamal Murray. Seven Nuggets go Malcolm Brogdon here. Because uh, Murray was off the board. Eight Kings end up getting the player that ends up on their team anyway. And Buddy Heald. Um, nine, Turin Prince goes to the Raptors. As uh, like that OG uh, just a year uh, earlier. Jakob Perto goes to the Bucks at pick 10. Because they value him over Thon Maker at this point. Uh, Magic go potential and Thon Maker here at 11. Hawks, 12. Karis LeVert, 13. Suns go Jagan Bender once again. They could have went Scalabissier here. Uh, 14, Deontay Murray. So this was all. So guys that didn't make it into this top 14 was LeBissier, Tyler Eulis, Stenzel Valentine, Marquise Chris, Pascal Siakam definitely could have been there. I honestly, hmm, now that I'm thinking about it, but play Siakam with Jagan Bender. I, okay, that is where I messed up on. I definitely think Siakam would have been drafted. I just didn't even think of Siakam at the time. Yeah, I would put Siakam over Jagan Bender, I think. So yeah, that is just going to be for me. Hope you guys all enjoyed this redraft and who got drafted in this draft. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Let me know if you want to see any other redrafts on the channel. Let me know what you have done differently. Let me know. I'm curious to see what you guys would have done at pick four with uh, Demonta Sabonis. Who do you think the Suns would have taken in a redraft there? Maybe they would have taken a point guard and then looked to trade Eric Bledsoe in that offseason. Maybe that's what they would have done. So yeah, that's going to be for me. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next video. Peace. Hopefully a video out later today.